Welcome to the I Can Do Show. I created this program to help those who have permanent injuries, uh, disabilities, uh, chronic pain, or just really any issue that's limiting them from experiencing the full quality of life that they used to or that they want to have. I hope you find the material that I teach in this show helpful, useful for helping you to recapture the quality of life that and to empower you to have the control to live the life you want to live. Welcome to the seventh episode of the I Can Do Show. Today's metaphor will focus on acceptance. Bob here is my special guest who will be helping me demonstrate the exercises. Let's get started and have a great workout. For any of the open-handed or empty-handed techniques that we're going to learn throughout the show, what we're going to do is we're going to take the cane, we're going to either put it in our pocket, in our waistband, or if we're wearing a belt, we're going to hook it in the belt. The reason we do this is because if you're on the street and you're needing both hands to get into your car or whatever, and something happens, if you have your cane leaning up, say, against the car, and you fumble for it in an emergency because someone startled you, well, it's possibly going to hit the ground, and then you've got no cane. But if you have it in your pocket and something happens, you can get it out quickly. The exercise we're going to do now is one of my favorite exercises. It's the twist. All right? And what Bob is going to do is he's going to swing his arms back and forth using his legs and his hips to move them. All right? Now you notice as he's doing it, his heel is coming up off the ground. His hip is turning all the way through. His shoulders are relaxed and they're along for the ride. Now this is a great exercise because it warms up the spine, yet at the same time it doesn't add any torque to the low back. Additionally, from a martial arts perspective, this is starting to train to use the legs and the hips to generate power while keeping the arms and the shoulders relaxed. Now while he's doing this, he's breathing nice, slow, deep breaths, keeping his body and his mind relaxed. Okay, do a couple more, and then that's good. We're going to work on warming up our wrists now. We're going to, first, but don't forget to hook your cane. We're going to do the yoga prayer stretch. We're going to press the palms together. See how the elbows are out, and pull down, he's going to pull down in front of his chest, adding, applying pressure through the forearm and the wrists. Now you'll notice, as he's doing this, the elbows are up, shoulders are relaxed though. This is important, because if you start to raise the shoulders to the ears, you're causing tension in parts of the body that we don't need to. Focus on a deep belly breath. Gently in and out, full and relaxing. Now go ahead and he's going to turn the hands down, and then he's going to rise his hands up, but keeping the shoulders down, and the elbows now are kind of going down. This is training the body to be able to function while working, yet staying relaxed. Now while he's doing this, while you do this at home, Thoughts and feelings may come up for you. What we're going to do with them at this time is we're going to place them in a jar. Just see yourself placing them in a jar and putting them on a shelf. This way you can stay focused on your exercises. At any time, if you find your mind starting to wander, just put it in the jar, put it on the shelf, so you can go back to it later and then bring your attention back to your breath. Now gently release and relax, shake out the hands. 
Very good. Great job. This next exercise is to warm up the wrist. It's the single hand cane rotation. You're going to grab in a mid shaft grip, close the fingers, and then you're going to turn palm up, palm down. And so you notice here that he's going to support his arm and his palm, he doesn't over rotate. It's just palm up, palm down right now. We're just beginning to warm the wrist up. And so what that means is we don't want to overdo it because you can injure yourself. And then after at least 20 times, you're going to move the hand back behind the elbow. You're going to relax these three fingers. You're going to hold the cane with the ring, as we've mentioned in past episodes. And you're going to go a little bit further than you did before, but we're still working on warming it up. So we're not going all the way yet. Okay? While you're doing this, you do want to make sure that your breathing is relaxed. If we start going tense and shallow in our breath, then we're going to cause the muscles in the arms to tighten and tense, and the shoulders and all that, which then increases the risk of possible injury within the arm. And so now he's going to go back, put his hand on the shoulder, and he's going to go full range of motion. All right, those three fingers are relaxed, and it's just the ring of power that is kind of helping him hold the cane. Now remember that ring is very important. So now he's going to go ahead and switch hands, okay, and he's going to start at the very beginning. Right. Now while he's doing that, let me remind you that the Ring of Power, and I know it's, it's the name that I kind of came up for, it's what makes it so that later on in some of the techniques you can use your fingers to get a nice snap, a nice crisp energy in your, your actions. Now he's going to go back behind the elbow. Going further in the range of motion. And now he's going to go back to the shoulder. Okay. Now, it is important to note that your range of motion may be different. Each person's range, each arm could have a different range of motion. That's okay. Honor where you're at today. Incremental progression will see you reach your goals. Okay? And let's not judge ourselves based upon what we see others are capable of. Let us just do the work each day to reach our goals. And now he's going to relax, shake it out, and get ready for the next exercise. The next exercise is to help stretch out the hamstrings, but in the process, we're also going to be helping our back. All right, this is our hamstring stretch. So what's gonna happen is he's gonna place the cane out in front of him. All right, both hands are on the crook. He's gonna bend forward, put his forehead on his hands. You notice that he has a relatively flat back. His legs are straight. His feet are close together, okay? What's happening is while he's in this position, he's stretching the hamstrings, but he's allowing his back to relax. So if you have a back spasm going on, this is a great exercise. Trust me, I know from experience, all right? This is because what's happening is your back is getting a chance to align itself, it's getting a chance to relax in the position, but stretch at the same time. And then the hamstrings are also stretching. Now from here, he's gonna push his hands forward. This is gonna turn into a modified downward dog. So now, not only is a stretch happening here, a passive stretch happening here, but there's a more, there's an active stretch going on in the upper arms and the latissimus dorsi. So this and also a bit in the uh, posterior deltoid, the back of the shoulder, and the triceps. This is helping him to elongate his reach, but it's also relaxing muscles that pull on the spine. So again, if you have back problems, this should help to alleviate them, and. From here, he's gonna bring the cane back underneath his forehead. He's gonna slide his hands down to the center of the shaft, the mid-shaft grip. He's still supporting himself, so the back is not carrying any weight, any real weight at this point. It is supported by the cane, it is supported by the legs, all right? He's breathing nice, relaxed, shallow breaths. He's putting those thoughts in a jar, putting them on the shelf, 
so that they're not interfering with his workout today. And then from here, the last stage, he's going to let the cane hang. Now at this point, your back should be warmed up enough that this is safe, it'll support some weight. However, if you do find it a little too intense, it's okay to bend, to modify by bending your knees. All right. One important thing to keep in mind though, as you do all these exercises, remember, we do show them to you in stages. However, you don't have to go to each and every stage. Stay where you feel like you're getting a good workout, you feel progress happening, but it stays safe for where you're at in this moment. If you try and push too far too fast, you'll injure yourself, and then that, that does more harm than good. So let's take incremental progression, all right? Now to come up, Bob is gonna place the, uh, the, the tip of the cane back on the floor, put his hands on the crook. He's then gonna bend his knees, a deep bend in his knees, He's going to pull the crook underneath his chest. He's going to push up with his arms and his legs so that no pressure is put on the small of the back until he's already up 90% of the way. So that the small of the back is only taking a small amount of strength. Do this every day. You should actually feel much, much better. So now we're going to work on practicing our strike angles. Strike angles one through six. We're going to use the body opponent bag, also known as Bob, not to be confused with Bob. I'm sorry, I had to go there. Uh, so the thing is, is the strike angles, remember, strike angle one is to hit the legs. Because Bob has a solid hard base, we're not going to worry about hitting that hard today, okay? When you're practicing at home, if you're practicing in the air, you can go ahead and swing with some force. But to protect the canes and the base, more particularly the base of Bob, we're just going to be tapping the base. All right. So strike angle one is same side. Strike angle two, other side. Strike angle three is rib or torso area, same side rib torso area for uh, on the other side for strike angle four then five is head six is other side of the head now i'm going to have bob hit bob and show you this while i do some more talking so one two three four five and six so and he's going to do this over and over while I keep talking. So one of the things that you want to think about is why are you going to choose to hit a certain point? The legs and the torso are going to deal with most situations. So those will generally be your first choice and second choice. All right. Now, to generate power, He's going to use his hips. Just like when we did the twist to warm up, he's going to turn with the hip to generate force and power. Okay? The arm actually should be relatively relaxed. Now, he's going to take it a step further, and remember the ring that we talked about earlier? He's going to use the ring to control the cane, and then the three fingers that were relaxed, he's going to use them to snap and give it more power as he puts the hip into it. So, go ahead. So you can see how with just these minor changes and increase the amount of force he's delivering into the, the punching bag, in the hob, with little extra effort on his part. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a certain method to my madness when choosing to have Bob hit Bob, all right? And the reason is this. In our mind, we wage this kind of battle. We are constantly fighting ourselves. Our negative thoughts, our negative sense of self, and our positive thoughts, and our positive sense of self. So we're going to keep this battle, we keep this war in mind 
for later on in this episode when we actually talk about the metaphors. All right? And go ahead and change the hands. Just don't get tired on the forearms after a while. I'll definitely warn you now. You will find that what happens is one hand, it's a lot easier than the other. Now, for most people, their dominant hand, it's so much easier. For others, if you're used to maybe because of golf or some other sport that has you lead more with the other side, then you may find that that side, it's, it's easier. It's up to you. Okay? A couple more hits, and then we're going to let Bob take a rest. And go ahead and take a rest, Bob. No, I meant this, Bob. Oh. All right. On to the next exercise. We're now going to work on defensive action, a block called the torso block. So what's going to happen is we're going to take the cane, and we're going to rotate it up in front of us. We're going to be bracing it with our back hand as we step away from the attack and turn our shoulders to face the attack. Though remember, the attacker is actually in front of you. So you still stay looking at the TV screen, all right, as you're bracing, okay? So you come, you step, as you pivot, and block. And let's go back to neutral. Step, pivot, and block. All right, so now Bob's going to continue doing this as I talk. So he's going to step, pivot, and block. He's going to keep looking towards you as he does it. So go ahead. Okay, now here's, here's what's happening. All right, and this is, this is a very good thing to know. So Bob, can you go over here for a second? So if I step and I step and I cross myself up, which is what happened, I'm off balance. That's why I step, I form an L with my feet. I pivot and I step, and as I sink, this foot opens so that I'm not crossed up. I'm in a solid, stable stance. And at the same time, I'm getting a great workout for my leg. Okay, Bob. So ready, and do it again. Okay, but I, I'm gonna have my I'm going to have my foot pointed towards the audience, Bob. Have this back foot towards the audience, this foot towards the wave master. There you go. Feel more stable that way? Okay, so try it again. And go. Towards the audience. Okay, and again. Now, this is not the easiest thing to do. I'm not going to lie to you about that. It takes practice. But when it's done properly, it's a very strong block, as we're going to demonstrate. So assume the block. Okay. With his shoulders turned towards me, if I push, he's not really going anywhere. Right? It's because he has two strong points with his hands on the cane this way. All right? Now we're going to move on to doing the reverse torso block. So the reverse torso block is like the torso block. What's happening though is this. I'm now, instead of going this way, I'm going to come from the outside in and across. Okay? Now the footwork is the same, but I'm just stepping with the other leg. So I come up and across. So buff. He's going to come up from the outside and across, and he's going to look at you, the audience. Okay? His fingers, you notice how his fingers are tucked behind the cane? You want to keep the thumb back as well. Because what happens if you don't, then if it's a wild punch and your fingers are wrapped around the cane, they could get injured. All right? With them bracing right here, less chance of injury. So again, and go. Okay, again, go. Now in time, this move will become instinctive enough that you can do it fast. 
But in the beginning, I strongly urge you, take it slow. Okay? Now, what ha what's happening, keep doing this over and over all, what's happening is in fencing terms, you know, sword fighting terms, the bottom half of the blade, or in this case the cane, is called the fort. And the top half is called the foible. Basically means it's weak. The fort is strong enough that no matter how strong your opponent is, you're going to be able to defend against their attack. The foible is weak that no matter how strong you are, leverages against you and you will lose. With this action, what's happening here is you are creating two forts. So even if your opponent's coming and they're swinging at you with the big old two by four, you're gonna block their attack, all right? So we've just covered the torso and the reverse torso blocks. Practice these at home, get them to be instinctive. Remember, step away from the attack. Turn your shoulders towards it and you'll be able to keep yourself safe. Now we're gonna work on balance and lower abdominal strength. We're gonna do the single leg stance. You're going to pick your leg up. We're just gonna hold it here for a bit. Now you notice as he's doing this, what's happening is he is providing balance for himself on his cane. He's focusing on doing the stance, right? His toes can be forward or they can be pointed towards, towards the floor. Either one's okay. He's working his lower abdominals. At the same time, as he's strengthening his ankles. This is really important for balance. As we become less ambulatory, as we can move around less, our ankle strength starts to get weak, and that's when we start finding we lose our balance the easiest. And then last, he's also working his calves and his hamstrings. He's now gonna switch legs, switch hands with the cane. He's gonna lift the leg up. And so he's again, working the lower abdominals, all right, he's probably feeling a little bit in the quads as well. Balance is being helped with the cane, but at the same time, that ankle is now getting worked, okay? If you have knee replacement surgery, if you have knee issues, if you have ankle issues, double check with your physician before doing these exercises. Make sure that they're okay. Now he's gonna set it down slowly. He's gonna shake his legs out. Breathe a sigh of relief that it's done. And hit. Today's metaphor was acceptance. Now, I want you to take a moment and I want you to imagine you're on a boat. You're the captain of the boat. You're the only person who can steer this boat. However, any time you grab the steering wheel of the boat, these monsters that are down in the hold, they're hiding in the hold, the bottom of the ship. And they're the scariest monsters that you can imagine. The ugliest, most hideous monsters. The most foul of demons. And any time you grab a hold of that steering wheel, they come up from underneath the hold to scare you and they threaten you. And they say that if you don't let go of that, that wheel, that they're going to eat you, they're going to kill you, they're going to destroy you. And so, of course, as all people do, you let go. And they also promise that as long as you do not grab a hold of that wheel, they will stay down in the hold and you don't have to see them. You can pretend like they don't exist. But lo, oh, if you grab that wheel. And so you let go of the wheel and you go back on this boat to drifting. You're just drifting aimlessly, round and around, going nowhere. And off in the distance, you can see land. And let's face it, after being out on this boat, drifting aimlessly for a while, you desperately want to reach that land. And every now and again, you get up the courage to grab that wheel. But every time you do, those demons, those monsters, they come up and they start threatening you again. The thing is this. 
What they don't tell you is they have a secret. And that secret is they can't hurt you. They can scare you. They can do their best to scare you. But they can't hurt you. They can't kill you. They can't destroy you. And so, if you take the time just to grab hold of that will and not let their ugliness scare you, not let their ugliness deter you from guiding yourself to that shore, then you can and will reach the shore. Now, as it relates to our exercises today, it is very common before working out for these thoughts, these emotions to come up. All these excuses as to why not to do it. During the exercises, all these excuses can come up. The thing is, is what we do is we don't give in to those thoughts. We grab a hold of that wheel and we drive ourselves to the land. Meaning, we actually continue on with the exercises. We continue with the commitment to train, to improve our quality of life. And so now, in our seventh episode, I'm putting forth this challenge to you this homework assignment, if you will. Take what we've been practicing, what you've been practicing, by watching my show, and apply it to other parts of your life. Grab the wheel and steer yourself to land in other parts of your life. I would also like to ask you all to like the Facebook page for the I Can Do and email me or through Facebook, let me know what you like about the show and what I can do to improve it. I'm always looking to make the show better. With your help, we can actually maybe help more people out there. I can do!